Oh, hast thou left me then, Bianca, utterly? Bianca, now I miss thee. Oh, return and save the faith of woman. I ne'er felt the loss of thee till now. "'Tis an affliction, a torment, e'en mistook, as if a body whose death were drowning must needs therefore suffer it in scalding oil. "'Sweet sir! "'Canst thou forget the dear pains my love took, how it has watched whole nights together in all weathers for thee, yet stood in heart more merry than the tempest that sung about mine ears like dangerous flatterers, and then received thee from thy father's window into these arms at midnight, when we embraced as if we had been statues only made for it, to show art's life, so silent were our comforts.' And kissed as if our lips had grown together? This makes me madder to enjoy him now. Canst thou forget all this and better joys that we met after this, which the new kisses took pride to praise? I shall grow madder yet, sir. This cannot be but of some close bods working. <gasps> Cry mercy, lady, what would you say to me? My sorrow makes me so unmannerly, so comfort bless me, I had quite forgot you. To make away all your good thoughts at once of her, no, most assuredly she is a strumpet. Ah, most assuredly, speak not a thing so vile, so certainly leave it more doubtful. You missed your fortunes when you met with her, sir. Young gentlemen that love only for beauty, they love not wisely. Such a marriage rather proves the destruction of affection. It brings on want, and wants the key of whoredom. I think you'd small means with her, oh, sir. Oh, not any lady. Alas, poor gentleman, what means thou, sir, quite to undo thyself with thine own kind heart? Thou art too good and pitiful to woman. Mary, sir, thank thy stars for this blessed fortune. What would you say now to a creature as pitiful to you as it, and, as it were, e'en sent on purpose from the whole sex general to requite all that kindness you have shown to it? Couldst thou love such a one that, blow all fortune, would never see thee want? Nay, more maintain thee to thy enemy's envy, and shalt not spend a care for it, sir, without a thought, nor break a sleep unless love's music wake thee. No storm of fortune should. Look upon me and know that woman. Oh, my life's wealth. Bianca! Still with her name will nothing wear it out. That deep sigh went but for a strumpet, sir. It can go for no other that loves me. He's vexed in mind. I came too soon to him. Her strange departure stands like a hearse yet before his eyes, which time shall take down shortly. Is she my wife until death, yet no more mine? That's a hard measure. And I'm rewarded with captainship of the fort. A place of credit, I must confess, but poor. The place not fits me. It suits my resolution, not my breeding. I have tried all ways I can, and have not power to keep from sight of him. How are you now, sir? I feel a better ease, madam. Thanks to blessedness. You will do well, I warrant you. Fear it not, sir. Join but your own good will to it. He's not wise that loves his pain or sickness, or grows fond of a disease whose property is to vex him. You never saw the beauty of my house yet, nor how abundantly fortune has blessed me in worldly treasure. Trust me, I have enough, sir, to make my friend a rich man at my, in my life, a great man at my death, yourself will say so. If you want anything and spare to speak, troth, I'll condemn you for a willful man, sir. Why, sure, this can be but the flattery of some dream. Now by this kiss, my love, my soul and riches, tis all true substance. Come, you shall see my wealth. Take what you list. The gallanter you go, the more you please me. Only, sir... Wear your heart of constant stuff. Do but you love enough. I'll give enough. Troth, then I'll love enough and take enough. Then we are both pleased enough. <laughs> <laughs>